After encountering a bizarre circus, an exemplary young man is forced to attend his own funeral to protect his family from himself. Today we'll recap the story of the 2009 movie Cirque du Freak, The Vampire's Assistant. While Steve says goodbye to his best friend at the funeral, Darren enjoys his free time inside the coffin playing mobile games. Before the funeral, the young man had always had a normal, happy life, a perfect family and an angry friend. The students on one of the ordinary days, the two young men prepare for Professor Kersey's class, only to find the man scratching the blackboard with his bare hands, teasing the poor students. In view of this, Steve convinces his partner to go to the terrace, where they begin to destroy lamps. However, the teacher notices the movement while he is teaching his class. After discovering their son's antics, Darren's parents forbid him to meet his classmate again, forcing the young man to worry only about his studies, work and family. However, the young man continues the friendship in secret, but the secrecy hurts his friend. As the two argue on the sidewalk, a bizarre car with the license plate, Destiny, appears on the street. Suddenly, someone throws a leaflet through the window of the vehicle. After looking at the paper, the young men discover it is the world's biggest horror show, piquing their interest instantly. During class, Darren hides the paper in his notebook, but Professor Kersey eventually discovers the secret. He then warns that no one should go to the event as it is illegal and those in charge exploit unsavory people. Despite this, the young men take advantage of the silence of the night to run away from home. When they arrive at the venue, they wait until someone throws a paper demanding that the young people pay for the tickets. In the face of this, Steve hands over the money, but gets no response and decides to take the money back, receiving a bite from a strange creature. Soon after, the little monster throws the tickets to the young men. Upon entering the place, the young men are faced with a strange man, who asks their age and if they have any kind of anxiety or heart problems. In addition, the man suggests that they answer the questions correctly. After that, the youngsters enter the Circus of Horrors, where a guy with a huge head presents the first show, The Wolfman. Quickly, the creature walks in front of the audience while the presenter controls him. Still, the monster viciously attacks a woman in the audience, ripping off her arm. To everyone's astonishment, the woman stands up and her member suddenly begins to grow, so she introduces herself as the Korma Limbs. Soon after, Alexander Ribs comes on, showing off a huge hole in his abdomen. After him, it's the turn of Diana Dentata, who appears on stage using her own teeth to hold onto a rope. Then a man with two stomachs appears, and everyone does bizarre things like breaking a shovel with their teeth, or swallowing metal objects and building a bicycle out of them. After everyone performs, the snake young man enters the stage, Evra has a bizarre skin and makes fun of his snake, which tries to advance in the audience. The young man intends to sing, but his pet gets in the way by trying to eat part of the instruments. At this, the presenter gets angry and calls for Madame Truska, who chooses Darren as her assistant and promptly goes off on him. Suddenly, a beard appears on the woman's face, surprising the audience. At the same moment, she has a vision about the young man and asks his name, but he lies saying that his name is Fred, and that he lives in another city. After the performance, the woman quickly shaves her beard and leaves the venue. Behind the curtains, she asks Mr. Krepsley not to come on stage, as she has a bad feeling about it. Despite the situation, the man runs wildly to the stage, where he warns the audience that his spider, named Madame Octa, has escaped from her cage. Faced with this situation, Krepsley decides to pull a rabbit out of his hat, but everyone is taken aback when his poisonous critter pops out of the hat. Quickly, the man tries to keep calm in front of the venomous animal, but the spider starts jumping from side to side, making his guardian try to dodge, but she uses her web to hold on to him. Nevertheless, the animal is thrown to the ground and its owner tries to trample it. Suddenly, Krepsley manages to find his flute, which he plays to control the animal. However, Steve admits to his friend that he has seen the man in a book about supernatural beings, claiming that he is a monster in disguise. As Krepsley balances his spider, it ends up flying into Darren's leg, who becomes hypnotized. Quickly, the guy goes to the teenagers and threatens them, saying that if anyone knew about the existence of vampires, they would be suffocated in their sleep. Suddenly, Professor Kersey appears accompanied by policemen to close the circus, so Alexander Costella goes to the citizens and scares them with his bizarre body. During his escape, Darren comes across the supposed vampire's room, where he finds a coffin, which suddenly opens after being touched. Then the young man finds Octa's cage and decides to play the flute to control the animal. However, he hears voices approaching the room, this makes the young man replace the spider's cage, and take the real one with him into the closet. At the same moment, the vampire enters the place accompanied by Gavner, and the two talk about the vampires, who are hunting their kind, and will soon come after them. Also, Tiny has returned from the afterlife, and is playing with the Book of Souls. Still, 
Krepsley refuses to start a war with his worst enemies. Then, the knights are interrupted when Steve enters the room, claiming he knows their secret. However, Gavner grabs him by the neck and asks if he was sent by someone, so the young man replies that he saw an engraving of the man in a book about vampires. The man dropped the young man to the ground, but Steve admits that he just wants to become one of them. Despite this, the monsters refuse to transform the young man, who tries to convince them with blood, but nothing happens. In this way, the young man confesses that his life as a human is sad, since his parents do not care about him. Faced with this situation, Krepsley tests the young man's blood, indicating that the transformation will not work, and so they send him away. After Gavner leaves, Darren remains in the closet and is startled when the vampire searches for his spider. He enters the depths of the cabinet and finds a way out through a dark tunnel. Outside, the young man comes across a bizarre car and decides to accept a ride. Inside the vehicle, a man named Tiny asks if the young man's name is Steve, and makes strange comments about the immutability of the human soul. At the same moment, Darren gets scared and asks to get out of the car, but the freaks stop him. Then the bald man steals a strand of his hair in order to find out if the young man is a leader or a bag. After that, the young man is left on the doorstep of his house, and his bike is thrown out of the car. The next day, Darren continues with the spider, hidden in the school closet. While talking to it, the young man is surprised by Steve, who goes up to him with curiosity. After discovering Madame Octa's presence, the young man scolds his best friend for stealing the animal and holds up the cage to get a better look, but ends up being startled by the school whistle and knocks the object to the ground, allowing the pet to escape. At the same moment, dozens of teenagers start appearing in the hallway, scaring the creature. Faced with this situation, Darren picks up the flute to control the animal, but he ends up dropping the instrument. Soon after, the students notice Madame Octa's presence and get scared, so she runs to the window, but Steve goes after her with a broom to hit her. However, the spider manages to dodge and jumps on the youth's head, until it reaches the ceiling, where it is trapped by a gum. In this way, the angry young man makes an attack with the broom, causing the animal to fall to the ground. Steve then tries to hit the critter again, but his best friend stops him. While they argue, the creature tries to escape through the window, but ends up trapped. His opponent rushes to crush it by closing the opening. The young man realizes that the spider is inside his shirt. Suddenly, it starts walking along his body and climbs up to his face, where it delivers a fatal bite, making the young man faint instantly. Then Madame Octa manages to escape to the circus, and Darren goes there to ask Krepsley for help. When talking to the man, the teenager receives a proposal. He will be transformed into a half-vampire to help his master, in exchange for protection against Tiny and the antidote to the spider's venom. In addition, the guy claims that his species does not harm people, and only vampinezes are capable of committing cruelties. Although reluctant, the young man eventually gives in to the deal, so Krepsley tests him, saying that his blood is perfect for the transformation. The vampire makes cuts on Darren's fingertips, and the two join hands. Suddenly, the young man falls to the ground feeling very cold, but is ordered to lick his fingers, which makes his wounds close instantly. Shortly after, the young man climbs on his master's back and they quickly rush to the hospital, where they find Steve with a horrible scar on his face. At the same moment, Krepsley makes an incision in the young man's arm, and deposits the antidote there using his mouth. Suddenly, Darren triggers the hospital emergency room and makes the sign of the cross to ward off the monster. Faced with the alert, the man warns his assistant to be careful with his new powers and leaves the scene. The next day, the teenager returns to school, but is surprised when the vampire apprentice scratches the blackboard in the classroom, leaving a mark on the object. At home, Darren devours a piece of meat in the fridge, then tries to control himself so he doesn't attack his little sister. Upon entering the room, the young man encounters Krepsley, who suggests that he leave his family forever in order to protect them. However, the man confesses that the young man must fake his own perishment. With that in mind, he says goodbye to his loved ones. Soon after, the vampire hands the young man something to drink, leaving his lips and fingers numb. The man grabs his apprentice's head and twists brutally, ending his life. At the young man's funeral, his best friend leaves a cell phone on the casket and notices that Darren's hands are bruised. Suggesting that he is still alive, the young man starts shaking his body. However, the teacher intervenes and interrupts the young man. After Steve leaves the place, he throws a piece of gum on the floor, but does not realize that Tiny is lurking, ready to collect the candy for his research. During the night, Krepsley goes to the cemetery and digs a hole until he finds the coffin of Darren, who is having fun with his cell phone while waiting for help. Suddenly, someone lurks in the shadows and the vampire begins to smell rotting flesh, forcing the young man back to his den. Suddenly, Krepsley is surprised by one of Tiny's henchmen, 
a vampire named Murtaugh, who hurls his adversary away. He then engulfs the vampire, and in a frantic struggle the two end up falling into the newly opened grave. During the battle, the man attacks Krepsley using a piece of bone, but he manages to dodge and counterattack. However, he ends up in front of the young man, and when trying to dodge the blows, his opponent throws him away from the scene. The young man is left unprotected and Murtaugh calls him a blood bag. However, the vampire suddenly appears and hits the madman with a shovel. Soon after, Darren flees the scene, but is surprised by the evil man who captures him with a sack. Upon realizing the escape, Krepsley throws the tombstone of one of the tombs at the enemy, causing him to release the young man. Then the master holds his apprentice and runs quickly to the highway, where they wait for the exact moment the man appears, so a truck approaches at high speed and the two flee, leaving Murtaugh to be run over by the vehicle. However, the driver of the car checks what has happened and is viciously attacked. Meanwhile, Krepsley takes the young man to the circus camp. Upon entering the site, the young man encounters all the freaks living in harmony. After that, the vampire confesses to Mr. Tall that Tiny wants to capture his apprentice. At the same time, Darren hears the conversation outside the tent, and invites a girl named Rebecca to join him. The head of the circus discovers the presence of the teenagers, and instructs the girl to take the young man to Evra's tent, who will share the hut with him. Along the way, the girl asks a little monster to guide Darren, who gets a bite after trusting the creature too much. At the same moment, Truska appears and catches the monster attention. Soon after, she has one of her visions and starts saying bizarre words. Later, Evra shows the room to her new colleague, and leaves a snot on his hand after greeting him. While arguing with the vampire, Truska can't control the growth of her beard when the man kisses her. At school, some teenagers start arguing about Darren, and one of them admits that the young man was boring. After hearing this, Steve throws a powerful punch at the guy. After the fight, Kersey kicks him out of his class, so the young man goes to the terrace, intending to end his own life. However, Tiny appears at the young man's side and reveals that his best friend is alive. Furthermore, the man admits that he knows about the young man's dreams of becoming a vampire, claiming that his best friend stole his place. In this way, the man provokes Steve to help him take over the world. While chatting with his new circus friends, Darren is recruited to perform some disgusting tasks, such as cleaning the werewolf's cage, feeding the spider and the bizarre little monsters. As he goes about his business, the young man is startled when one of the small creatures pulls something heart-like from its own chest and puts it away again. The vampire apprentice tries to run like his master, but shoots at high speed into a sign. During the evening, he has fun with his new friends while the Korma Limbs offers parts of her body to Alexander. Watching the scene, Toothed Woman feels hurt that she doesn't have the same skills, so Darren comforts her and gets a kiss as thanks. Later, the young man misses his best friend and tries to call him. Krepsley shows up and steals the cell phone, which is stomped to pieces. Soon after, a car arrives at the camp and Tiny gets out of the vehicle, so the little monsters run up to him to greet him. The man then asks Mr. Tall to hand over the young man, but he replies that he needs to think about the case, even after Krepsley is against the request. As he leaves the place, Tiny orders his mascot to keep an eye on the vampire apprentice. The other day, Darren goes about his chores and is constantly chased by the bizarre creatures. Upon entering Rebecca's tent, he finally discovers that she is a monkey girl, as she has a tail, which she hides because she always trips over it. Later, Krepsley captures one of the little monsters that was chasing the young man, and forbids him to leave the camp, threatening to beat him. During a walk in the woods, the vampire simply disappears out of nowhere and reappears grabbing Darren by the neck. The man then throws his apprentice to the ground in an easy manner, claiming that the young man cannot defend himself. After the teen gets up, Krepsley attacks him again, but the young man manages to fight back with a punch. Even so, his master demonstrates the right way a vampire should attack, which is by forming a blade with his hand, capable of cutting the tree easily. When trying to repeat the blow, Darren ends up breaking his nails. Faced with this, the man admits that the young man is very weak, and that he needs blood. Meanwhile, Murtaugh prepares Steve in a ceremonial manner, delivering a stake blow to the poor lad, who is attacked by several henchmen. Later, Kersey comes across his student accompanied by the evil man breaking into his house. Quickly, the young man rips off the teacher's glasses and attacks him with his claws. At the same time, Krepsley teaches his apprentice to make a person faint by exhaling a gas. The vampire then makes an incision in the individual's skin, but the young man gives up feeding. During the night, men break into Evra's hut, but they are surprised when they find a snake in the teenager's bed, who watches everything while hiding in Rebecca's tent. However, the youngsters are taken by surprise when they find their location. At the same moment, Darren attacks the enemies using a mannequin, then strikes a blow with an iron, 
opening a cut on the forehead of the madman, who heals the wound easily. However, Krepsley springs up and hurls the monster against a mirror. When another man quickly approaches, the vampire throws him away with a powerful kick. Soon after, he guides his apprentice to a coffin, hiding the young man inside. Outside, the werewolf is released to advance against the enemies, who suddenly disappear when they notice the animal approaching. Suddenly, they surround the beast and deliver several blows with their claws. However, the battle is interrupted by members of the circus, who intend to fight the invaders. Nevertheless, Mr. Tall appears and expels the adversaries from his camp. The next day, Darren discovers that Rebecca has been taken by the vampire, so he leaves the scene in a rage to save his friend. Meanwhile, Steve shows up at his best friend's house, scaring the family when he invites Tiny into the place. During his mission, Darren travels by car with strangers, and feels the urge to feed but manages to keep control. Later, the vampire apprentice arrives at his home, where he finds a note stuck by a knife, in which there is the address of a theater. The young man then realizes that Octa was chasing him, and asks her to say goodbye to Krepsley, who prepares himself by collecting weapons to help his assistant, but stumbles upon Madame Truska, who warns him that he is in danger of dying. However, the man does not care about this and continues his mission. At the same time, Darren arrives at the theater, where he finds Murtaugh. Rebecca emerges hanging by a rope, followed by the young man's family, and the man claims he has prepared a feast. Then the evil man introduces Steve as the one who will rule them all, surprising the vampire apprentice, who is offered a proposition, if he feeds on Rebecca, he can free his family. At the same moment, the young man takes the knife from Steve's hand and starts to attack him, but is thrown away. Outside, Krepsley plunges a knife into one of the enemies, but is surprised by Tiny, who clears his passage as he wants to see the outcome of the battle. Soon after, the vampire enters the theater and throws his spider at Steve's head, and a knife at Murtaugh, who throws it back and the two fight back until they get close and land blows and bites on each other. Suddenly, a tooth of the evil man gets stuck in Krepsley's forehead, which angers the vampiric even more. Meanwhile, Steve manages to brutally stomp on Okta, but doesn't realize that Rebecca is preparing to break free using her tail. As the adults continue their violent brawl, the girl manages to pull Darren away from the battlefield. Behind the curtains, she offers her blood to strengthen her friend, but he is afraid of losing his humanity in doing so. Still, Rebecca manages to convince him that his actions do not define him. On stage, the two monsters fight and plummet into the bleachers, where they begin to hurl accoutrements at each other, but the vampire manages to bite his opponent's hand viciously. However, this angers the enemy, who attacks Krepsley's face and throws him away, then he drags him across the bleacher seats, ripping the chairs out with brutality. Then the man throws his victim high into the air with such force that he breaks parts of the ceiling. At the same moment, Steve also attacks his best friend's master, striking him with a knife, and then Murtaugh throws him away. Just as the young man is about to strike the final blow, Darren comes up using his super speed to stop him, throwing the youngster away. The vampire manages to retrieve a knife and strike his adversary in the heart. Before he loses his life, Murtaugh warns that the Vampanese have started a war. Despite this, Steve wants to continue fighting, so the two friends throw blows so fast that it is barely possible to observe. After reaching one of the corridors, Darren receives a headbutt from his opponent, followed by several powerful punches. The vampire apprentice manages to use the blow taught by his master, but misses the target and destroys the wall behind him. When Darren is about to win the battle, he gives up on eliminating Steve, who takes advantage of the gap to counterattack. However, the fight is interrupted by Tiny, who warns that the fate of the two is already written by the books. Moreover, he confesses that Darren will one day look for him, as he is the worst of the bloodsuckers. However, the young man surprises him by replying that he will never let his actions control him. Then the evil man casts a spell on Murtaugh's body, which begins to shrink in size. Suddenly, the inanimate body transforms into one of the tiny creatures. Later, the vampire apprentice says goodbye to his sister, and intends to hypnotize her family so that they will forget that he still lives. He then discovers that Rebecca also has feelings for him and kisses her. At the circus camp, Mr. Tall conducts a vote with all the members to decide if Darren can join the community, and approval is determined when one of the little monsters raises his hand. Later, Krepsley talks to Madame Okta, who is recovering from the battle. Gavner enters the tent, and the two arrange a trip for the vampire apprentice, but the young man doesn't need to know that yet. In his cabin, Darren finds the gift his master left him, a coffin that has a stereo. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.